You build a system with a few microservices inside, but how are they going to communicate with each other? In this video, I'm going to show you how to implement loosely coupled microservices communication using messaging with RabbitMQ. I have a content platform system with two services inside, built using ASP.NET Core Web APIs. There's the newsletter API, which uses the vertical slice architecture, and it has just two features inside, one for creating an article and one for getting an article. And then we have the newsletter reporting API. It's responsible for aggregating data about newsletters and calculating some metrics. It also has a concept of an article entity, although it only cares about the identifier and when it was created. Then it has an article event, which can be of a specific type. And currently I only have one article event type, which is when an article is viewed. So let's see how we're going to implement communication between these two services using messaging with RabbitMQ. I'm going to start by adding the RabbitMQ Docker container into the Docker Compose configuration. So here's what that will look like. We're going to use the RabbitMQ management image. We'll give it a name just to follow the convention that we already have in place. I'll configure a few volumes so that my RabbitMQ configuration is persisted on the disk and I'm going to set the environment variables to connect to my RabbitMQ image. RabbitMQ is one of the more popular message brokers out there and we're going to need a messaging library to be able to connect to it. The one that I'm going to use is called Mass Transit and let's see how we're going to install it in our services and connect it to the message broker. I'm going to start from the newsletter API and add the RabbitMQ configuration there. And then we're going to apply the same configuration in the reporting API because the two services are going to be talking using the same RabbitMQ instance. So let's start by installing Mass Transit. Let me look for the NuGet package. I'm going to search for Mass Transit and I'm going to install the Mass Transit RabbitMQ package because it has the RabbitMQ transport, which is what I'm using under the hood. So with the library installed, let's see how we're going to configure the required services with dependency injection. I'm going to start by adding the mass transit services. So I'll say builder services at mass transit. And this is the starting point for configuring mass transit in my application. I'm going to add an action here, which is going to use the bus configurator and then we're going to use it to add some additional configuration. I'm going to start with a simple piece of configuration by setting the endpoint name formatter to use kebab case. So what that is going to look like is, for example, if I have an article created event and a respective endpoint is going to format it like this. So using hyphens in between, so article created event. I find this format more readable, so that's why I'm using this formatter. The next thing I'm going to do is use the bus configurator to connect to RabbitMQ by calling the using RabbitMQ message. Then I need to pass in a delegate containing a context and a configurator, and I'm going to connect to my RabbitMQ instance. I'll use the configurator to set my host, which is going to be a URI, and I'm going to get this value from my application settings. So I'm going to say builder configuration and get the value with the message broker host key. This will be the value that's going to point to my RabbitMQ host. And I'm also going to configure the username and password for this RabbitMQ instance. I'm going to say username and let me just reuse this configuration section. So we're going to use message broker username and then I'm going to set the password and it's going to come from message broker password. And the next thing I need to do is to configure my endpoints. This is going to take the configuration that I put in place in the code and translate it into the required topology on the broker. So this means it's going to create the required exchanges and queues and bind them to the messages that I'm sending through my application. And this is why the mass transit library is so powerful because we don't have to deal with the infrastructure, although this can be a double-edged sword because you're now giving away your control of the infrastructure to the library. The next thing I need to add is the section in my app settings development JSON. So here's the message broker section, 
with the host, the username and the password that I'm going to use to connect to my RabbitMQ instance. Now I'm going to copy this configuration to the other service that we have, which is the reporting service, because we are going to be connecting to the same RabbitMQ instance. So I'm going to add the message broker section and I'm also going to add the same code for connecting to mass transit. We're going to need the mass transit library in here as well. So let's go ahead and install it. I'm going to install mass transit RabbitMQ and in the program CS file of the reporting API, I'm going to add the same code to connect to mass transit. So now both of our APIs are connected to mass transit and we can start sending messages between them. I don't want my APIs to actually know about each other. So I'm going to create a separate class library that's going to contain the message contract. So I'm going to create a new project and it's going to be a class library, which I will call contract. The API projects are going to reference this class library and inside of it, I'm just going to define simple records which are going to represent the messages that I'm going to send over RabbitMQ using the mass transit library. The first message that I'm going to create is the article created event. This can be a simple record and I'm just going to use two properties. One is going to be the ID of the newly created article. And I'm also going to add one more property which is going to be the date and time when this article was created. So I'm going to call it created on UTC. And I'm going to add one more event while I'm here. And this is going to be the article viewed event. And I'm going to update this to say viewed on UTC. And let's move this message into a separate file. So now I have two message types defined, one when an article is created and another when it is viewed. And now I need to publish them somehow from my newsletter API when these relevant actions happen. So here's how we're going to do that. Let's start by adding a project reference to the contracts library, which contains my message contracts. And let's update the features where these messages should be published. So if I head over to the create article feature, I have the handler inside, which handles the respective command. And inside of the handle method, we are creating a new article. And after I'm done with creating the article and I persisted this in the database, it's a good place to publish the article created event. So let's inject the service from mass transit that allows me to publish events. And this will be the I publish endpoint. So I publish endpoint. Let's inject that. And I'm going to inject this from the constructor. So now that I have access to the publish endpoint, I can go ahead and publish my message. So I'm going to say await publish endpoint and I'll call the publish method. And I need to create a new article created event. So let's go ahead and assign the properties to the values that we have on our newly created article. And let's add the created on date. And I can also pass the cancellation token. So let me just format this nicely and we are done with publishing our article created event. So now the handle method is doing two things. It's creating an article and persisting it in the database, but it's also publishing a respective event over the message broker. The other service that we have, which is the reporting API, is going to be listening for this event. It's going to process it and then store something in its own database. So one thing that's important with microservices is that they each have separate databases so that you minimize the coupling between them. And then you can decide how you're going to share data. What I'm going to do here is I'm going to store multiple copies of the data in each microservice. And the microservice is going to contain just the minimal amount of data that it needs to function correctly. While I'm still here, I'm going to implement publishing of the second event that I defined, which is the article viewed event. So I'm going to inject inside of the get article query I'll use the same publish endpoint from mass transit. So I publish endpoint. Let's inject that from the constructor. And I'm going to use it right before I return the article response to the user. I'm going to say publish endpoint, publish, and let's create a new article viewed event. Let's set the ID to the article response ID and the viewed on UTC to date time UTC now. I'll also pass the cancellation token 
to this method and we're done publishing the event. So we're first going to query for the article, then we're going to publish this event that it has been viewed, and then we're going to just return the article to our API consumer. This takes care of publishing the events that we are interested in, but we also need to implement the handlers for these events in the other service. Because we are using events, our communication is loosely coupled and the services don't know anything about each other, they only know about the message contracts, which are our actual events. Now, in the newsletter reporting API, we're going to implement a set of consumers which will use mass transit to listen to these messages and then handle them accordingly. So let's start by adding the articles feature folder and let's add a new feature inside, which I will call article create. I'm going to define my mass transit message consumer inside. So let's make this a sealed class. I'm going to call it article created consumer and we need to implement the iConsumer interface from mass transit. Now I need to specify what is the message that I'm consuming and this will be the article created event. Now I don't have a reference to the contracts project so I'm going to add it and now I have access to the event itself. Let's implement the consume method to handle the article created event. I'm going to inject my database context so that I can store the article in the reporting API database. So this will be the application DB context. Let's inject the context from the constructor and I'll make the consume method asynchronous. The body of this method is going to be straightforward. I'm going to create a new article and note that this article is different from the one that I have in the newsletter API because it contains less data. And we're going to take the ID from the message that we get from mass transit. This will be the article created event and it has the ID and the created on date. So let me grab that from the message. And now that I have my article, I can say context add article and I can persist everything by saying context, save changes, async, and I can even pass in the cancellation token from the consume context. When the article created event is published, it's going to first hit the message queue, which is RabbitMQ, and then Mass Transit is going to take care of subscribing to this message in the reporting API, and it's going to invoke my article created consumer. Let me create one more consumer for the article viewed event. So let me create a new type, article viewed will be my feature name and inside of it I'm going to define one more consumer. So this will be the article viewed consumer. I'm going to implement the iConsumer interface and I'll specify the article viewed event as the message that I'm handling. Inside of it I'm going to also inject my database context. So application DB context let's inject this from the constructor and let's implement the consume method. So the first thing I need to do here is to fetch the article from the database of this service. This also assumes that the article was previously created and if you think about it, it makes sense because you can't view an article that wasn't already created. So I'm going to say await DB context and take the articles and I'll say first or default async and I'm looking for an article that has the ID matching the one on the message. So context, message, and then the ID of that message. So let me just format this vertically so that we can see everything on the screen. If the article is null, then two things could have happened. One is that we received the article viewed event out of order and the article created event wasn't processed or the article created event wasn't processed successfully at all. So how you handle this, I'm going to leave up to you. Right now, I'm not going to do anything. I'm just going to return from this method and I'm going to proceed with the rest of the consumer. I'm going to create a new article event NAV. So I'm going to say new article event and I'm going to set the properties on this type. I'm going to set the ID to a new GUID because this is a new entity and then I need to set the article ID. The value I'm going to use will come from the article ID entity and this is the entity that I have in this services database although the same entity exists in a different context in the original microservice. Sharing data like this is common in microservices and you don't have the safety of referential integrity because you aren't working with the same databases. These are just some of the joys of working with microservices 
and let's set the other properties. So the created on of this event is going to come from my message. So I'm going to say context message viewed on UTC and the event type will be view. And I'm just going to add this to the context and call save changes. So I'm going to add the article event and I'm going to say context save changes async and I can pass it the cancellation token. However, you may not want to support cancellation on your messages at all and just decide not to use it. And let's also update this in the article created consumer because in reality, I never want to cancel consuming the messages that come from the message broker. Now that we have our consumers in place, we also need to configure them with mass transit. And this is relatively simple. I just need to go back to my mass transit configuration and add my consumers. All I need to do is call the bus configurator and use the add consumer method and specify the consumer as the generic argument. So we have the article created consumer and we also have another consumer for the article viewed event. So I'm going to say add consumer and I'm going to say article viewed consumer. These two lines of code will take care of setting up the required infrastructure so that my messaging can function correctly. Now, the next thing I want to do is to introduce another feature in my reporting API, which I will call get article. Now, this feature may have the same name as the get article feature in the newsletter API, but their responses are going to be different and the intent will be different. So I'm going to make this into a static class and I'm going to define a new class inside, which is going to be my query. So this will be an I request from mediator and it's going to return an article response. We're going to add a property inside there's going to be the ID of the article that I want to return. Let's go ahead and define the article response type because we're going to need it to implement the handler. So I'm going to say public class article response and I'm going to add a few properties inside. So I'm going to expose the ID, the created on and published on dates and a list of events that is present for this article. So the article event response is going to be another type then I'm going to add, so article event response, and it's going to contain the ID of this event. I'm not going to expose the article ID again, so I'm just going to add the created on date for this event and the event type, which in our case is just one event when the article is viewed. So with this in place, I can go ahead and implement my handle method. This is going to be an internal class, which I will call handler and it's going to implement the I request handler interface for our query and it's going to return a result which now lives in the shared project so that I can share this type between my two services and I'm going to return a result of article response. Of course I need to also add the result type to my request for these two to match. Now I can implement my I request handler and implement the handle method to return the article response. So I'm going to inject my application database context and I'm going to use it to implement my query. So inside of the handle method, I'm going to add the implementation for the handle method because it's a bit cumbersome and then I'm going to comment on what we are doing. So I'm querying the articles table, returning a new article response, fetching the properties that I can from this table, and I'm also fetching the events from the article events table. I'm matching the article ID on the event to the article that we are selecting. This is just going to be a single article and we are projecting this to the article event response. EFCore is able to translate this into a proper join in the database. So there's no concern in terms of performance. So after this, we just return the article response and I also need to expose an endpoint. And for this, I'm going to add just a new class inside. So this will be the get article endpoint. It's going to implement the iCarter module interface. So let's implement this interface and I can use it to define my get endpoint. It's going to have a route of API articles. We're going to grab the ID of the article from the route and we're going to use it to send our query. So I'm going to say GUID ID. We'll grab the iSender from Mediator and let's implement my endpoint body. The endpoint needs to be asynchronous. So let's decorate it with async. Let's create our query. So this will be the get article feature. And then we're going to create a new query. 
and set the ID to the one on the route. Then I can say var result await and we're going to send this query and get back our result. And if the result is a failure, let's return our results not found and we can pass it the error value. Otherwise, we're going to return results OK and give it the article response. So we've done a lot of coding, but let's see if all of this that we have implemented is actually working. Here's my newsletter API running on port 5001, and here's the reporting API running on port 6001. So I'm going to start by creating a new article from the newsletter API. Let's give it a title of, let's say, clean architecture, and let's give it a content of clean architecture is awesome. I'll give it the one tag of architecture and let's send this request to our API. So we're going to hit the breakpoint in the create article feature and we're just going to go over the commands, create a new article and persist this in the database. Now this is the important part where I am publishing the article created event. I'm going to press continue and we're going to land in the article created event consumer. This lives in the reporting service. So this is a completely separate process and the message was published to RabbitMQ and we are able to consume it in the other service. So let's handle this message and we're going to create a local copy of this article that we can use to further process requests. We're going to get back the response in Swagger and it's going to contain the ID of this article. Now I'm going to use this ID to fetch the article a few times and this is going to cause publishing of the article viewed event from the newsletter service. So when I hit continue, we're going to publish this event and land in the respective article viewed consumer. So we're going to fetch the article from the reporting database and you'll see that it isn't null because we previously handled the article created event and we're just going to persist the event itself for reporting purposes. So let's hit continue. I'm going to send this request a couple of more times and I remove the breakpoints in the background. This is going to cause a few more events to be published over the queue and then processed by the reporting service. And now finally, let's head over to the reporting service API and try to get the same article with this ID. So I'm going to hit execute and we land in the get article feature in the reporting service. So this is a more complex query, which does a join between the article and article events table. We're going to get a response and this is what we get back in Swagger. So you'll see the ID is the same. It contains when it was created and a bunch of events that are triggered from the article service when we fetch the article. If you enjoyed this video about microservices, then make sure to smash the like button and also let me know in the comments what other topics about microservices I should cover in future videos. And until next time, stay awesome.